My name is Terry from Shades of Green Flowers and today I'm going to show you how to do a simple vase arrangement. Like all of us, we've been confined to our homes and our gardens and our little two kilometre radius. Uh, and today I was out on a walk and I was looking around and saw all these beautiful foliages and twigs and everything that's sort of spring at the moment. And I thought, why not just pick a few and let's see what we can do. So I've been into my garden and been picking greenery. Um, at the moment, you can't buy flowers in any florist because we're all closed, unfortunately. But supermarkets are still sparking flowers. So even if you picked up a, a random bunch, um, it could have lilies, it could be bright colours, it could be anything. Uh, the same principles will apply to you. So what I've got is just a few simple bunches of flowers. So we've got some drips some irises, and a few lilies. The rest are all from my garden and just from around the area. So what I've got here is some lovely laurel, which most people have in their hedges. Um, they're actually flowering at the moment, so you get a beautiful little white sort of textured flower on it. Uh, I've even picked some wild honeysuckle, just a few. Uh, we've got some variegated shrubs. And then these I thought were fantastic. They're just simple tree branches that are starting to blossom, and they've got these little tips on them. And you could even pick cherry blossoms, those little white blossoms or pink blossoms or any blossoms you like. So I'm going to do this arrangement uh, for a medium sized vase. The vase is always very important because it has to, if it's too big, the flowers will blast and if it's too small, the flowers just flop open. So I've got a medium sized vase, so we can use this one here. Uh, and what you first of all need to do is we start with that greenery. So we take the greenery and just have a look at the size of the vase. It's, you literally want the length to be double the size of the vase. So we, we, what we do is we just condition the bottom of the stems. We don't want any greenery or any leaves going into the water because it makes it smell and it, it, it won't last very long. So that's how you condition it. So I've done that with all these stems over here, as you can see. Um, same with these ones. And even the honeysuckle, you can just pull off the bottom ones like that. Now, to get the shape of your vase is very important. Even if you buy a bunch of flowers from a supermarket or whatever, you'll find there's not a lot of greenery in them. So when you put them in a vase, they just tend to just fall open and these big gaps in them. So when you add greenery in, you actually, you just make a decent shape and it pulls the flowers in and it gives them a nest to sit into. So we're basically making a nest. So I'm going to start off with our greenery. So we take a few stems of laurel. Now you can use whichever other greenery you have, more or less the same size. And I'm just going to place them inside the vase like that. And as you can see, I'm just facing them outwards because I, I, I want you to see these little flowers. Um, that one's a bit too long. So we just clip it off. And we go all the way around. Another one. And if you have any leaves, because they are from your garden, that have been chewed or anything, just pull those ones off and keep them nice ones. So there we've already got a base. Now we're going to incorporate a few of these nice variegated ones. So I've got about two or three stems. And these are actually lovely because there's a few different leaves on them. So they kind of spread out and they give you a nice sort of hand to work with. So they can stick them in there. And I like to turn the bars around. Just so you can keep getting that round shape. I'm going to stick in another one of those. And I'll say one more should do us. Right, so we the third one. And already you can see the vase is full. You've got a nice shape there, and that's what you call a nice nest, really just to put your flowers into. Now I have got these lovely twigs which I want you to use as well. I like to put the greenery and the woody bits, the twigs and things in first. So we're going to put these kind of, I want to keep these a bit longer just because they, they're a bit of, a bit dramatic I suppose. So I'm going to pop three of these in into the middle. got a lovely long kind of stem to it, kind of wispy, those long as well, and we'll just go around 
squeeze these in, like that. So before we even put any flowers in, we already have an arrangement from our gardeners. It doesn't cost us anything. Right, from here now, I'm going to add in some of my lily. Well, actually, I noticed there's a few of these lovely solidagos inside this bunch that I got. Uh, these little yellow bits. Yellows and purples, I chose those colors today because they're kind of eastery. Gives us a good feel. So I'm going to pop these in, these little bits of... And we just always cut the bottom of the stem, even if they're the right end, the right size. Just otherwise they create a little air bubble and they don't drink properly and they won't last. So I'm going to just pop those two in. A little bit of texture. Right, turn around. Keep, if you keep turning your arrangement, you, you get a more even arrangement because you, you're looking at it at all angles. So now lilies are probably the most popular thing out there. So I have my long stem of lilies and I'm going to just take the knees off. Now these are very closed, obviously they'll take a while to open. And uh, when they do, it will transform the whole arrangement. Now I'm going to leave the lily quite tall, um, not as short as the greenery, just so about, I'll cut it about there. And I'm going to stick one in the center. That's going to be your main focal point, right? Already you've got a lovely arrangement. Uh, I have a few lilies here, so I'm actually just going to be a few lilies in this area. So I'm going to put another three around the edge, just slightly shorter than the first one. One. around the central one. So you can have one in the middle and two on the outside and another one on the wall and the back. There we go. So you've actually got a lovely lily arrangement. When that starts to bloom it will be huge with all these big white blossoms. So now we're going to use our irises a little pop of color. These are really stunning, especially for this time of year. Size-wise, now again, we're not going to go as tall as the lilies, so we're going to cut them down just a bit. Right there. And again, we're going to go in, we're going to do three in between the lilies. So we're going to go one, which I'll do from the front first. So it's in between the two lilies, one there. There's another two lilies there, so we're going to put one in between there. Just really gives it a lift. There. Already you've got your lovely woodlandy looking arrangement. And now for the rest, you can add them, you can do a few taller ones through the middle. One. They usually say to go in threes or fives. Three is a good number to work by. So you do one in the center and then three on the outside, then three flowers on, in between them, and then three again in the middle. So one, two. And some of these still have to open, so when they open, they're going to look amazing. So at the moment in this, this arrangement, we've got open irises, but when the irises start to die, then the lilies will open. So it will keep transforming. And I've got another few irises. I'm going to just pop them in in different lengths. Now we've done three medium size around, three tall, and we do three shorter ones around the size. So, as you can see over there, I've done a shorter one, and another shorter one, and the last one. arrangement and now just a finishing touch I have a lot of jib here or baby's breath rather um, we don't need to use it all it depends how much you like it's really nice and soft and wispy and um, it comes with a lot of little pieces so you can always cut off some of the shorter ones um, and we're going to go with say three taller ones for the middle Oh, 
baby's breath, there's always a discrepancy between what is jip and what is baby's breath. Baby's breath is a smaller flower. Jip is actually a thicker, a bigger head. Um, just, just some information. Uh, right, so we've got one, two, and three. Coming up there. And all these little bits that come off, you can always keep them and do a second branch and do a smaller one, even just with greenery and a few daffodils, or once you, you have the same principle of your greenery first and then your flowers. Okay, so we've got three nice tall bits there. And I'll just do a few shorter ones. for the last three weeks. I think I'm actually having withdrawal symptoms. Uh, I know the government deemed that flowers are not necessities, but I think for some of us who love nature and love plants, I think they are. And that's why I find myself walking around and looking at things that I can use. Um, you know, I mean, there's nobody who doesn't like flowers. Every time we deliver a bouquet or Anyone who receives flowers are always delighted. And even myself, when I bring flowers home and I have them here in the house, every time you walk past them, they just give you a little lift. Right, so there we go. I think that's enough. So you can just turn it around just to see. And there we have our very natural vase arrangement with using our greenery. Uh, one other little trick I will just show you. I have a second vase here, more or less the same size. And once you've finished doing an arrangement, what will happen usually is little twigs, you know, they might have a bit of dirt underneath them, especially from the garden, so they'll, they'll dirty that water. So you do just get a second vase, or you can just take them out and pull up your vase. And you just pop them into some clean water. Like that. 